Sa two sample proportion, ang test statistic na gagamitin natin ay medyo kaiba doon sa mga nauna nating hypothesis testing. Naunahin natin yung formula sa pagkuha ng z-value using two sample proportion. Sa test statistic na to, ang z will be equal to p hat 1 minus p hat 2 all over p hat c times the complement of p hat c times 1 over n sub 1 plus 1 over n sub 2, where yung p hat 1 and p hat 2 will be your um, sample proportion ng sample 1 and sample 2 at yung n sub 1 and n sub 2 naman, yun naman yung sample size ng sample 1 at saka ng sample 2. Now, itong p hat c na to, makukuha natin yung value ng p hat c using another set of formula. At ang formula niya will be x sub 1 plus x sub 2 all over n sub 1 plus n sub 2. Now, ang p hat c will be a very important um, formula doon sa paghanap ng ating uh, uh, conclusion sa two sample proportion. At gagamitin natin yan sa pagkuha ng test statistic at kapag, sa pag-check ng normality ng uh, two sample proportion. Now, let's have our first example on using uh, this test statistic in two sample proportion. So, we're going to be looking into research on cholesterol and heart attack. Now, according to this research, high levels of cholesterol in the blood are associated with higher risk of heart attacks. Will using a drug to lower blood cholesterol reduce heart attacks? The Helsinki Heart Study looked at this question. Middle-aged men were assigned at random to one of the two treatments. The first treatment is 2,000 51 men who took the drug gemfibrosal to reduce their cholesterol levels and a control group of 2,030 men who took the placebo. Now, during the next five years, 56 men in the gemfibrosal group and 84 men in the placebo group had heart attacks. At ito naman yung summary noong data set na ginamit nila para sa research na ito na kung saan yung first group ay nag-take ng gemfibrosal na nag-reduce down ng blood cholesterol level sa mga um, tao na member noong grupo na yun at yung isa naman, ang isang grupo naman yung nag-take ng placebo. At ito yung summary ng kanilang mga numerical values. Sa gemfibrosal group, 56, of 56 people or 56 men suffered heart attacks after 5 years out of the 2,051 um, men nakabilang dun sa grupo na yon. So, ang p hat natin kapag dinivide natin si 56 at 2,051 will be equal to 0 0.0273. At yan yung sample proportion noong ating gym fibrosal group. At yung placebo group naman, according to research nila, 84 men naman na kabilang dun sa grupo na yon na after 5 years ay nagsuffer ng heart attack. So, meron tayong uh, total of 2,030 doon sa placebo group at pag kinuha nyo yung p-hat noong placebo group, it will be equal to 0 0.0414. At yan yung mga numbers or mga values na gagamitin natin para sa ating hypothesis testing. So, ang hypothesis testing natin ngayon ay eh, iikot doon sa gym fibrosal group at saka sa placebo group. Now, paano naman tayo mag conduct or magpre-present ng hypothesis testing using two sample proportion. At ito yung breakdown noong ating hypothesis testing for two sample proportion. Yung unang step natin tulad ng mga nakaraang steps doon sa paggawa or pag-conduct ng hypothesis testing will be writing your hypothesis. So, sa pag-write ng hypothesis, since dalawang samples yung ginagamit natin at two sample proportions, specifically yung ating gagawing hypothesis testing today, to define our first proportion or P1, it will be the proportion of the middle-aged men who would suffer heart attacks after taking gym fibrosal. At yung P sub 2 naman, yung second sample natin, will be the proportion of the middle-aged men who would suffer heart attacks after taking the placebo. So ang ating null and alternative hypothesis will be P1 is equal to P sub 2 which means parehas lang sila ng proportion at yung alternative hypothesis naman natin, yung proportion ng mga nag-take ng gym fibrosal eh mas kakaunti ang nag-suffer ng heart attacks ba kesa doon sa P sub 2 which is yung proportion ng ating placebo group. So ito yung ating null and alternative hypothesis na test using the two sample proportion. So yung sa second step natin is pag-check ng mga conditions. 
Random ba yung sample? Independent ba yung sample? Or normal ba yung ating sample na gagamitin? Now, sa step number 2 sa ating SRS or Simple Random Sample, alam natin na randomly selected yung mga participants doon sa ating research. So, yung ating Sample dito is random so na satisfy yung condition na yon. At independent din yung ating mga sample base doon sa ating word problem. Now, para naman sa pag-check ng normality, kakailanganin natin kunin yung formula na n sub 1 times p hat c should be greater than 5 at saka n sub 1 times the complement of p hat c should be greater than 5. At since dalawa yung samples natin, mag Gagamitin natin yung formula na yan sa sample 1 at doon sa sample 2. So kapag kinuha natin yung value ng p hat c, which is given by the formula x sub 1 plus x sub 2 all over n sub 1 plus n sub 2, ang ating p hat c na gagamitin natin para sa lesson na ito will be 0 0.034. At ito yung value na gagamitin natin to substitute p hat c at saka yung 1 minus p hat c. So, ito yung ating value para sa ating normality. So, with this in mind, ang ating n sub 1 times p hat c will be 70.3493. Yung ating namang n sub 1 times the complement of p hat c would be 1980. Yung ating n sub 2 multiplied by p hat c will be 70.3493. At yung ating n sub 2 times the complement of p hat c will be 1960. So therefore, lahat ng ating mga values is greater than 5. So yung normality is na satisfy. Therefore, sa step number 2, lahat ng conditions natin are satisfied so we'll be able to test our hypothesis testing without any precaution. So, sa step number 3, doon na natin gagamitin yung formula na pinakita ko sa inyo kanina. So, sa test statistic natin, yung mga values na pinakita ko kanina doon sa screen will be yung X sub 1, which is yung mga number of men na nagsuffer ng heart attacks after 5 years, which is 56. Yung N sub 1 is yung sample size noong gem fibrosal group, which is 2051 with a p hat of 0 0.0273. At yung ating placebo group naman, 84 naman sa kanila ang nagsuffer ng heart attack out of 2,030 na participants. Now, yung ating p hat 2 will be 0 0.0414. At yan yung mga values na gagamitin natin para sa formula ng pagkuha ng test statistic ng two sample proportion, which will be given by p hat 1 plus p hat 2 all over the square root of p hat c times its complement times 1 over n sub 1 plus 1 over n sub 2. Alam natin na yung p hat c is equal to 0 0.0343 doon sa kinumpute natin kanina para sa pag-check ng normality. Now, by direct substitution, yung z value natin will be equal to 0 0.0273 minus 0 0.0414 all over the square root of 0 0.0343 times 0 0.9657 times 1 over 2051 plus 1 over 2030. Now, kapag ginamit yung calculator nyo, ang z value natin para sa test statistic will be equal to negative 2.47. At ito yung makakatulong na sa atin kung i -re reject ba natin or hindi natin i -re reject yung null hypothesis basis sa ating um, p-value or sa ating uh, significance level. Now, to do step number 4 and step number 5, ito muna yung ating summary doon sa mga previous uh, steps na ginamit natin. Yung ating null hypothesis is p sub 1 is equal to p sub 2. Yung alternative natin is p sub 1 less than p sub 2. Yung mga conditions natin are satisfied with a z value of negative 2.47. So, yung ating p value gamit ang calculator at saka yung table of values ng ating z statistic will give us 0 0.068. At ito yung gagamitin natin to compare sa alpha na 0 0.05 whether it reject or hindi natin it reject yung null hypothesis. So, sa step number 5, since yung ating p-value is napakaliit which is equal to 0 0.0068, this is less than an alpha of 0 0.05, we have strong evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So, if we reject natin yung null hypothesis, which makes our test significant. Therefore, taking gem fibrosal can reduce the rate of heart attacks among middle-aged men who took them. So, ito yung ating 
conduct or uh, mga steps na ginagamit sa pag-conduct ng uh, hypothesis testing for two sample proportion.